So my name is uh, Tyler Strike. I'm going to talk about images and hopefully cover all the basics and some of the more advanced stuff. So a little bit of myself, I've been using Drupal since 4.7, so about 12 years. I was a freelancer for the first couple of years, but for the last seven years I've been working for the University of Waterloo. Everyone asked me what we do at the University of Waterloo, so I'll give you a little bit of background. So we're, we're a team of 10 people. We're made up of seven developers. Uh, of these seven developers, we have our tech lead. We have a one person that does accessibility for not just our team, but also other websites on, across campus. So he does audits, etc. And we have one other guy that does just DevOps. Um, we have two trainers. They do all the support, emails, RTs, etc. And they also launch uh, new websites, wherever. We offload that uh, stuff to them. We provide the tools for them to launch new websites, etc. And we have a system, system in who runs, uh, sets up all the servers for us. And we have a backup man who is our ex, our previous system man if he goes on vacation, etc. And then we have one manager that manages our team as well as the portal team, which is the go-to app for uh, the in-house built app that every student uses on campus. And then every semester we might have one or two co-ops to help us along. So today I'm going to start off with the, the basics of Drupal. Uh, of images in, in Drupal 8 and how to set them up. So I'll just like walk through, do a demo of all these things. So I'm just gonna, so Drupal 8 comes with two content types, a article and a basic page. Now with the article, they actually come with an image. This is different from Drupal 7. Drupal 7 did not have an image field that came with out of the box, but with Drupal 8 it is. So if you're going to add a new image field, you click on Add Field, and then select the image. Um, they give you like a couple of customization, like a default image. You can specify which file types or file extensions you want to use. This is useful. If you want to limit the user, say you don't want them to upload animated GIFs, you might take GIFs out. So yeah, that's the basic. There, there is other ways to upload an image to your content type. You can actually use the, the WYSIWYG that comes with the CK editor. Uh, I don't recommend this, but here, I'll just show you anyways. So you can upload, there's a button, the image button. You can select the image and it gets uploaded. Now I don't recommend this way because the actual image gets hard coded into the WYSIWYG. So it's not responsive at all. There's no way to apply different styles or anything. It's just that original image and that's what you get. Um, there is another way, there's not another module that extends still puts in the WYSIWYG but extends it a little bit, which is called the insert module. So, so here's an example of a field with the insert module turned on. It allows you to, I'll just move this a sec, upload an image. And then you can select the image style and apply that when you insert. So if you click So in this example here, when I click insert, it inserts, uh, while well, this image is a little smaller, but if it was bigger, it would insert uh, an image of 325 by 325. Now how do you control the display of the image? So, I'm going to go back to the article. Instead of managing a field, I'm going to manage a display. 
So this is this screen you see now is how it is with Drupal 7 and how it was with Drupal 8 before um, 8.6. With 8.7 out, there's now the layout, layout builder. So this looks a little bit different. So now that it doesn't show you any fields out of the box. But if you click manage layout, you can now you now have the screen where you can manage what it actually looks like and see a preview of it right in front. So for the image field here, his option is a placeholder. And you set configuration, and then you get all the options. So you can set what like what image style you want this image to be. Um, and you have a couple other options, like if you don't want to display the image itself, you can display the URL to the image, etc. So they should highlight. So you have save control, control here, but you, you have to click on the gear. And then it gives you the same options. And I was talking a little bit of image styles. Um, so image styles are, you are you're, you're manipulating the, 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 op, the image. So you're either like resizing it, scaling it, cropping it, et cetera. So you have to set these things up yourself. So you have to go to configuration. Sorry, my site's a little slow today. And here's a bunch of image styles I've set up already. So I'll set up a basic image style just for testing. And I recalled it. So So you create a new image style and then you add effects to it. So, out, so, so here, I, well, here's a bad example. I have additional effects, but out of the box, there is not that many options. You can only do cropping, scaling, etc. There's like four or five of them. But with additional modules, you can have a massive list of like, and this list here is like, there's three different types of effects that you can apply to your your image styles, and later on we'll go over a couple of these. So the most common one you have is uh, scaling, where you would set up the width and height. So say if you want the, the image to only be 200 uh, pixels wide, you would just specify that. And this thing will keep the ratio of height to width. So in this example, it kind of gives you a preview with the hot air balloons. So if you have an 800 by 600 image, it will shrink it down to the same proportion. So 200 by 150. All right. All right, so that's the basics. Um, so as I mentioned there's additional effects you can have. So in V7, the, the main one uh, that allows you to have lots more effects it's called image cache action. I believe this module did one thing when it was first created, like one action, but then it kind of grew and grew and grew. So the name itself does not describe what it, it does. So in D8, they actually renamed it to image effects. So in the D8 version, everything that's in image cache action, as well as three other ones, text image, filter, and smart crop, they combine them all together into just one module. So you can do like crazy complex, complex things like you see the, the image I have here on the slide. It has, it, it changed it from a color picture to a black and white. It put a mask of some sort over, like a TV mask on top of the image. 
And you can do other crazy stuff too, like you can convert a JPEG to a, a PNG. There's so many things you can do. Now you might be asking, like, hey, like how does Drupal do all this changing and manipulation of the, the, the uh, dash hole uh, images? Well, it, Drupal itself is not doing it. It's actually a couple of libraries that come on your system. So there's two main ones. There's Image Magic, and then there's the G, GD library. So both of these are very old. Um, they, the GD has been around since the 90s, and Ninja Magic has been around from the 80s. Like back in those days, you had to use the command line to manipulate the objects, where now, with Drupal, it's point and click. Um, so they're both written in C. Uh, the difference between them, Image Magic can support more file types. So if you're allowing your users to upload TIFFs and bitmaps, etc., you might want to use Image Map. But that's usually not the case now. Usually you're only uploading JPEGs and GIFs, etc., because you want um, you don't want your images like. TIFFs and bitmaps are like really, really large files. So you usually don't want large content on your, on your site. You want them as small as possible and still have the same quality. So back in the day, Image Magic was known to have better quality images and smaller file sizes. But when GD2 came out, they pretty much have the same similarities in quality and size. So Drupal favors GD. Um, I couldn't find, I tried to research why they picked JD. I couldn't really find anything, but from my understanding, uh, when Drupal was in like the first stages, like 2.0 or whatever, back, say back in like 2005, the support, the PHP support for Image Magic wasn't there. It, you could get it working, but it took a lot of effort where to set up the JD library was very, very easy. So Drupal jumped on board with that one, and then there was no point to switch to Engine Magic or anyone else, so it just kept that one. So at the University of Waterloo, we actually use the Image Magic instead of using what Drupal uses in the core. Um, and there, there's only one reason why we do this, is we allow our users to upload animated GIFs, and with GD, what it, when you try to resize one of these animated GIFs, it strips out all the, the sections, all the clips, where in the image magic actually makes it work. So, um, I kind of wanted to talk about like, there's a lot of people, when you create an image or like set up a style and everything, there's actually quite a, about, quite, quite a few people that are involved usually. So usually you get a request from the director, hey, I want an image of X size. And then the site builder, if he has the image styles that are created, can like, oh yeah, either he creates the image style or um, yeah, he sets the scale to whatever the director wants and away it goes. But sometimes images are more complicated and you have to have extra effects. So if you say, if you want that TV screen around your hot air balloons, you know, you need to install additional modules. So then you would need a web developer to install those extra modules to add those extra effects for your site builder to use. And you need your system man to install the right library, either Image Magic or the, the standard GD library. So, responsive images. So, D7 did not have responsive images. They look, and like you'd have, here's this uh, example of the image tag. It's just a tag, it's one image. There's, if, they up, if your user uploads a two megabyte picture of a kitten, then your, your users are gonna download a two megabyte picture. If they're, if they're on a desktop or they're, if they're on their phone. There was no real, real options. Now, with HTML5, they introduced a new picture tag and where you can specify different sizes, uh, different images to use based on the size of your screen. So in this example here, if, if your screen is bigger than 
well, bigger than 465, it will, it will grab the kid in that study. If your screen is even bigger than that, over 650, it will grab the kid in stretching picture. And if, if it's lower, it will use the one below. This is the standard default one. So the picture, picture element's been supported for quite a bit. Um, it's not supported in IE, but it's supported everyone else. Um, if you have a user on IE, like your university you, it installs IE, or you're in a different country that still uses IE, the people that use, people on phones don't use IE at all. So you can tell right about that if they're, if they're using IE, they're on a desktop. So you can serve them the bigger picture because you pretty much know that they're on a, a bigger device. So I'm going to demo now how to set up a response image for uh, that image, the, 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 the field. So right out the, right out of the, out of the box, when, you, when I added that image field, it's not responsive. It's just one image or one image style you applied. But there's a way with DH, you have to enable the responsive image module that you can allow different sizes based on screen resolution. So yeah, first I said you have to install the responsive image module that comes with Drupal Core. So there's two steps. One, you have to define a suite of image styles and then add it to the actual field. So when you install the module, you get this extra configuration called responsive image styles. And you can set multiple different styles. You can specify one style per field. So. So I should specify first um, with Drupal 8, they have this new thing called breakpoints. I should have a couple slides on this. I'll skip over that to that. So you actually, when you create a new theme in Drupal, you have this breakpoint.yaml file that you set up. And it specifies all the breakpoints in your theme. So at what resolution it should become a different context. So here's an example over here of what it looks like. It's always good to name these things with, like, with the good names. Uh, you'll see later on that these names get exposed to, to the, 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 the content creators. So if you give these like size one, size two, size three, size four, it's not that helpful. You should actually say, hey, this is when it's wide or extra wide. Because then, they, then, then the content creators can go, okay, for this, wide, I want the wide style versus, you know, X2 style. So, so there's, so with, when you're creating your response image style suite, you have to specify which break groups you want. So I'm just gonna use the Bartik one for this sample. Bartik comes with three different styles, three, sorry, three different breakpoints. It comes with a wide, a narrow, and then a mobile. So in these, what I recommend doing is specifying just one style for that one. So for the wide, you can, well, I don't have them set up, but say you want a large for the wide one, medium for the, the narrow, and then for the mobile, you can set something like a thumbnail, and you can save this. You also say like your fallback as well if they don't fall into a group. Mm -hmm. And usually the mobile and the fallback should be the same. 
So now I've created the image style. Now I can apply it to my field. So I go to manage display. And then the format here is just the default is just image. I can now when I saw the module, I now have this other option called responsive image. And then it gives me other options to specify which image, responsive image style to apply. So I've created the one just I showed you called demo image, image style. And there we go. So when we create content with this one now, it will use those three styles based on, your, based on the resolution. So sometimes you have your, uh, one problem with images I get a lot is you need something, you, you have an image, you want it to shrink, but you don't want to lose a specific point. So say you have a picture of the president of Waterloo, no matter what the resolution, you have to make sure that he's not cut out. So how do you do this? Or how would you accomplish this? The simple way is to use this module called focal point. And what this focal point module do, does is it gives you a crosshair to your thumbnail and you select which point that has to be in that image. And it will scale crop around that point. That will be the center point. If, it, if you select the top right corner, then obviously it's going to, that's not going to be the center, it's going to be the top right point. But it, no matter what, that, that point will always be in the image. So you, you have to enable this module. And to set this thing up, you have to go to the manage form display. And then specify which that the focal point is the one you want to use. Now there's only one other caveat for focal point is that the image styles that you usually use don't work. You have to set up focal point image styles. So here, they, yeah, they, they have their own crop and their own scale and crop. So you have to select these ones. Only if you s specify a style that does not have these two effects applied to it, then it won't work. And it's kind of it's it's kind of misleading when you do this because you're like, why don't because uh, you have the form with the crosshairs on it, but then that spot doesn't get it. Like it doesn't get, when you save it and you, you view the content, it doesn't crop around and you can't figure out why. Well, the reason why is you haven't specified in your image styles that to use that specific focal point crop or that scaling. So focal point covers 95% of the use cases. Um, however, you can, Sometimes the user wants to have more control. They want to control what the picture looks like on every breakpoint. So say you have that picture of the president. And in that picture, there's a, he's handshaking someone. And um, there's like three or four people on the left and right side of him. So if you use focal point, it will make sure that the president's in the picture. But it might cut off the person to his left and cut off the picture to the right. So you need to give the user more control of what, what should happen. So the way to do this is there's another module called Image Widget Crop. So it allows you to crop the image for every single breakpoint. Now the only thing with this module, it's very hard to set, like it's tedious to set up. So we'll walk you through that. There's multiple steps. So the, both the focal point and the image widget crop module uses the crop API module. Um, this module itself doesn't do anything. It's kind of like uh, C tools. So out of the box, it doesn't do anything. But it has the tools for these other modules to do what they need to. All right. I'll 
所有をあまりジャンプと the final what、uh, you can see and then I'll, I'll step back and show you how to set everything up so for the basic page I have set up an image field here let's go to the creation page So I'll upload a picture. And then if you have the module set up, you have this crop image. And I've set up one crop, crop type. If you have multiple crop types, I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Then I can select, so you'd, you'd set up a crop type per breakpoint. And then you can specify what it looks like. So for this crop type, It will have whatever I set it to as. Oh, here, I'll, I'll set it up so with a better name. All right, so first you have to specify the crop type. You usually want the names to be of the actual breakpoints. So you can call it wide. And the other thing, too, if you want your image to have a specific height, say you want it to be 400 high, and this is the, the wide, so say it's uh, 1080, the, the width, then you want to specify the, the ratio and keep it. Because what happens, it's hard to show you. So, in the previous example, that the crop type, I, it, when I raise. Uh, here, let me show it. It's hard to describe. Can you increase the screen resolution? Sure. I mean, the size. Yep. So here, this crop type has a fixed ratio. So it doesn't matter what I do, it will always be the same.、Um, you can give the users different, so they can create a box whatever size they want. But the problem with that is when you apply i m style effect, it will give them an image that they don't want. So in this example, I've, so this, in this example, this crop type is. Uh, a ratio of、uh, 1280 by 400. So if they zoom in and go just the eye of this headshot, then the picture they'll get is that but zoomed out. So they still get what they want. Whereas, yeah. So, you specify the crop type. I'll specify a couple more. So extra wide. This will be 12 e by this. So, I specify three crop types. So, the crop types come from the cropping module? Correct. So, now I have to go to that image, responsive image styles. I have to create a new style. Sorry, 
now I have to create the actual these style, the image styles are not in here. So first I have to do that first. And for it's like the same thing as like the focal point. They have their own own, own effects that you get to add or they won't work. Really short in time, so I'm going to just walk through. So I have a documentation that we use at the University of Waterloo. So I'm just going to walk through that. It's probably going to be much quicker. So you, yeah, you have the breakpoints. Then this is the response image style. So here's all the, the different points. So at the University of Waterloo, we have actually five breakpoints. Just some complicated stuff. So then we we add one image style per breakpoint. So the image style has their own. So either set it to manual prop. And then here I think we jump to this part. So, so I'm jumping back to the basic page where I have it already set up. So to get it working, I have to specify the image widget crop as the actual form display. And then in here, I specify which crop types to have here. And the only, the crop, the only image styles that have manual crop set will show up here. So if you first saw in the module and you come here first, this list will be empty. So it's kind of, kind of confusing. So you have to actually create the image styles and then come back here. So I'll try to see if we can add one to show you I can grow this list to two. Type. Save that. Now, if I go back, you go to the form display. Now, I can select white as well. And in this case, you want to select both of them. And save it. So now if I go to the piece of content, you now see there's two different types. So yeah. So yeah, you want to do this for every single breakpoint. 
there any questions? I, I know I kind of jumped around quite a bit there. Yeah? What does the optimizing of the images do in terms of the DPI of an image? So images can come in at any DPI size. Correct. So, like I've had people that have tried to load in 20 megabytes of images because that's what they get from the camera and they go straight from the camera to the website. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the question was about the DPIs, so of the actual image. So it it it, it depends. If you have a, 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 a dense image you upload, and the was well, two things that happen. If you specify like around the eye, then it will just it will, it will zoom into that spot, but the quality would be be better because when you zoom, it's the it's more dense, so therefore, it's like having a, a higher megapixel camera, right? You can just zoom in more. So you get, you, it allows you to do that. Um, but yeah, if you have a low DPI and you try to zoom, you get lower quality. Um, no, but so. how, can you, how can you stop someone from setting, trying to upload it like straight from the camera and look? Yeah, so. Like so op image optimization no it doesn't so when you upload online you don't you can't specify the dpis you can specify the, the maximum file size so you can control that so that's like one of the form settings but you have like no control over the type of the file, the DPIs of the files. And like, there might be a contrib module that does that, but Ella Box at Drupal Core does not do that. So let's quickly show you the, the max file size. So there's two, if you do max file size, there's the actual server that controls how, how Big of the file you can upload, but also Drupal controls it as well the actual file size. So if, the, if your server can only upload a uh, two megabyte file and you say in Drupal at eight megabytes, if so, it won't be you can only upload two. But that's Correct. So yeah, video is a special case. It's yeah. If you're gonna allow your, your users to upload videos, then um, you have to increase the file size, etc. Because all the people that I'm um, working with, I just send them out to third-party image optimization because if you can't, they don't understand about DPI, and they don't understand. Yeah, obviously. So this just would not work. No. No, Drupal does not, yeah. File optimization, it doesn't do well. So, yes? It is showing a maximum image resolution there. And I can't, I've seen that before. Is that, I think that's new in here. I, I can't tell you. I don't know if it's, I thought, I thought it was in D7, um, but I could be wrong. Okay, so that's, Yeah, so that's just pixel base. Yeah. So you can specify that I want um, whatever, like 200 by two, or 2,000 by 2,000. But then again, that's your, it's still, it doesn't, you can, you can have a 100 by 100 image, pixel image, but extremely high DPI, and you'll get around that. I got a couple more things. Actually, uh, all right. Actually, uh, oh yeah, that's good for now. Uh, anyone else have questions? Yeah, Nate. Uh, do you have any experience or anything to say about 
integrating with the digital asset manager? Like I know at Waterloo there was one when I left. Yeah. Did I end up integrating with him? So yeah, at University of Waterloo we use uh, Asset Bank. Um, to get Asset Bank into Drupal, you have to use a contrib module to do that. So there's, there's quite a few uh, digital asset management, or DAMs they call them. Um, usually most companies, like third parties, they'll create their own module, contrib module, and then it allows you to use their, their digital asset management. Anyone else have questions? Yep. No, it's not. So we were trying to look into that, try to find a solution. So yeah, if you upload an image, you specify like, I think you're asking, if you specify all the crop types for a specific image, right? And then you want to use that same image with those crop types somewhere else? Yeah, so what we do usually, we, uh, we optimize the images, as the lady suggested. So instead of having a 20 max, you reduce it to a size that is larger than you need, but something manageable. Yeah, no. If you want to use the same in two spots, you have to okay. manually set it here and set it again. So. Okay. Are there any quick questions or? Yeah, that might be might be possible, because yeah. like the crops go with the image or the entity, I guess you'd say, the file entity. So, uh, yeah. do, you, do you guys do the crops in the digital asset manager or always in Drupal? Always in Drupal. Okay, so you're only importing the raw asset from the digital asset manager. Correct. Usually, the, the digital asset management allows you to like select the original or a scale down image, you know, like low res or specific size, and then that gets imported into Drupal, and then Drupal does the resizing again per, per, per breakpoint, and then that's how the image gets on to the website. Yes? Can I ask a question, actually, a generic question for anybody who can answer it about images? I had issues with, uh, even though I, I wasn't doing any processing to the image within Drupal uh, and uploading the image that looks good at a certain size, say 600 by 400. You upload that JPEG and the style is at 600 by 400, you leave it alone, but it doesn't show as it shows on your, on your image viewer. It's blurry and sometimes, depending on I don't know. The image, it could, it could, you could have color shift as well. Did anyone experience that? No. There's a, there's a setting somewhere about the image quality. Yeah. Right. That's by default, it's 100%. Yeah. 
I thought it for hundred percent. I don't want to do anything to it. No, no way. Well, was the it? images have set color settings too, so you can. It could be the the image itself when it's on your machine is being. Um, it it travels with color settings, but sometimes. It's Like if I, we had a university where someone has an image, it's like, oh, it's blurry. But um, yeah, we didn't do anything different. It just, you know. I, I ended up actually uploading images that say if I, if I need a maximum container for 400 pixels wide by 200, I ended up uploading twice as big of the image and shrink them down just to have them sharp. We have the physical yeah. problem uh, in Google 7, and the way you saw the state in the image style, instead of using crop and scale, you just be using crop. Because for somehow, when they crop the image, they rescale the image last time. It was a little bit low. Okay. If they move the image size. So just crop instead of crop and scale. Yeah. yeah. Like I should say, like if you if you upload a picture twice as big and then shrink it, there's uh, chances you lose quality because it's not the the same image. Yeah, it's like like the sample. Let's say when you're shrinking, it's like four pixels. You might be dropping depending on the algorithm. You can get really bad issues. It's always better to crop every single time. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it there. If you guys have more questions, like feel free to come talk to me after. It would be great.